Uh, so in the last couple of videos, we talked about complex numbers and why we might want to think about them and what it would mean to add or subtract with them. And so in this one, I want to talk about what about multiplication. And so just as a reminder, we came up with this new number that was the square root of negative one. None of our old numbers worked for it, so we just made up a new one. And we realized that it was useful that at least help us visualize what's going on to think about the square root of negative one as being a point right up there. It's being an arrow that points straight up like that. So that's what i is equal to. What you can start thinking about is multiplying. So what happens if we do i times itself? Well, if you square a square root, they cancel out and you just get negative one. So i squared is equal to negative one. So just as a reminder, this is our real number line. So it's just regular old negative one. One step to the left is zero. This is our imaginary number line up here. One that's a little trickier for us is what is i to the third power? Well, one way to think about i to the third power is it's i times i times i. And if I gather the first two i's together, I get i squared. And we know what i squared is. We just talked about what i squared is. It's negative 1. So I can actually figure out what i cubed is because it's negative 1 times i. It's just negative i. We can represent that with one step moving south. You might be able to predict visually what i to the fourth should be to finish out that picture. You can also prove it by making it into i squared times i squared, because that's four i's all in a row multiplied. i to the fourth is negative one times negative one. i to the fourth is just equal to one. Two negatives make a positive. There's regular old one right there. If you continue this pattern, you'll see that i to the fifth is just equal to i again. i to the sixth is equal to negative one i to the 7th is equal to negative i, i to the 8th is equal to 1. You could rotate around as many times as you want. I could ask you some crazy question like what is i to the hundredths? And you'd be able to answer it's just equal to 1 because i to the hundredth is just a bunch of i to the fourths 25 times. That's just full rotation. It's just spinning around the circle. Nothing to it. So that's the basic idea is that when you multiply two complex numbers, you get another complex number, and there's some rotation going. So multiplying involves rotation. It's a little bit weird, but it's kind of cool. Let's look at another example. I'm going to take 1 plus i times 1 plus i. Now, when I look at this, this reminds me of when we just did regular old FOIL. 1 times 1, 1 times i, i times 1, i times i. If you prefer to draw out the box, you can draw out the box. I'm not going to draw out the box for this one. 1 times 1, 1 times i, i times 1, i times i. What's i times i? i squared. Oh, but i squared. We know what i squared is. i squared is just equal to negative 1. We combine the two i's together. We replace i squared with negative 1. Oh, well, we can combine those like terms. 1 and negative 1 make 0. So I have 0 plus 2i. So we have an example here where we started with a complex number that was at 1 plus i, multiplied it by itself, we got a complex number here at 0, 2. That's kind of interesting. There's some rotation going on here. Let's look at another example. Let's take 2 plus 3i times 5 minus 2i. Multiply, 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 multiply. 10 minus 4i plus 15i minus 6i squared. 
combine the like terms. Replace an i squared with negative 1. Combine the like terms. So here on this picture, 2 plus 3i, 5 minus 2i, multiply those together, you get 16 plus 11i like that. So I want you to think about what's going on here with the angle, what's going on here with the length. There's definitely a very specific relationship. By the way, add algebra 3, 4. You don't need to be able to specifically articulate what that relationship is, but it's a really cool idea, and it gives you a way to double check your answer if you can see how the angle to your answer is related to the angle of your original complex numbers and how the length of your answer is related to the length of your original complex numbers. So thanks for watching. Let me know what I can do to help out.